Hello, pet parents. This is Melody from Pet Fed India, your host for today. And as promised, we are back with another insightful live session for you all. So joining us today is Mr. Adnan Khan, dog behaviorist, founder, and owner of Canine School. And he will be helping us today in understanding, do indie dogs make good pets? Hi, Anand. How are you? Welcome. Hi, Melody. Thank you so much for having me here. And uh, I'm really, really honored to be on this live and very excited to be engaging with the audience that's joining us today. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for that. So for those of you who don't know him yet, Adnan is a dog behavior consultant and owner of Canine School. And his other accolades include founder of the first therapy dog initiative in North India, Canine Healers, first Indian civilian to be deployed chief dog trainer and behavior consultant for the explosive detection dogs at the Parliament of India, Lok Sabha, global head of dog training and behavior at Friendicos, specialist in advanced obedience, behavior modification, as well as security dog and police dog training. So Adnan, welcome to the live chat. Of course, it's great to have you with us. There's always been a lot of questions about indie dogs as a breed and their adaptability as a house pet. So here we are today to discuss in detail all about indie dogs their adoption, behavior, training, and upbringing process. All the to-dos and not to-dos for the first time adopters and much more. So all those who are watching us, please feel free to drop in your queries in the comments section below and we will surely answer them. And of course, just like the last time, we're running an interesting trivia contest during this live session. We will be asking you, the audience, three questions throughout the session. Three lucky winners will who answer all these three questions correctly will win a gift hamper courtesy Purina Pro Plan. So all you have to do is just sit tight and stay tuned to this chat as the trivia questions will be announced in the middle of the entire one hour session for you to answer in the comments below. So people who are joining us now, we are here to discuss the topic, do indie dogs make good pets? So if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments section below. And of course, we will answer them for you. Well, till then, of course, we need to uh, kick things off with Adnan and we would like you to address a few commonly asked questions to help us understand more about indie dogs. So uh, first, Adnan, can you briefly introduce indie dogs more as a breed? Right. So um, first of all, thanks for taking this topic up because, you know, this the, this indie dogs in particular does not have a lot of, uh, you know, documented information nobody's talking about them nobody's discussing them and at the same point of time you can see that there is a lot of promotion for adopting them and bringing them home and a lot of people are bringing them in as well so you guys are doing a fantastic job by taking this as a topic and making indie dogs as valuable as you know any other breed um so the thing that i always want to point out is that indie is basically like a a common term for um, the type of dog that has been existing on the street outside our home, whether it's the rural area or the urban area of India, um, and many other countries of the world as well, whether it's South America, Eastern Europe, uh, places in Africa. So these are basically uh, free ranging dogs. Uh, these are basically stray dogs or street dogs who we call indie dogs, whether they are, you know, whether it's derived from Indian strays or independent dogs, that is where this indie dog comes from. Um, for me, I want to categorize this thing as one breed in itself, indie dog as a breed, basically. Um, I'll come more to that later. I want to uh, also point out that this breed is not just a a dog that is, uh, you know, completely free ranging like a fox or a wolf or a hyena, but it is over time evolved by the, you know, um, city urbanization that, you know, as we were evolving, as the cities were growing, new breeds were coming in. Sometimes those breeds have also ended up mixing with these dogs in the street. But right. um, overall, this breed is absolutely um, independent and uh, autonomous and they think for themselves and they're survivors, you know, they are for generations after generations, they do not require anybody else to look out for them. They hunt for their own food. They survive traffic on their own. They survive other predators attacking them, maybe animal haters trying to go after them. Uh, generation after generation, they survive all of this 
every single day they never know whether they'll get hit by a car today evening within an hour sometimes they're sleeping harmlessly and they might get you know injured and stuff like that so for right. me it is one of the strongest most intelligent most resilient breed in itself wonderful i mean like so crisp and uh, i love the last two words you used for our indie dogs the strongest and most res- resilient absolutely i totally and completely agree to that okay so indie dogs have always had a different lifestyle like you just mentioned living on streets because they don't know where their next meal is going to come from when uh, you know someone is actually like you just mentioned uh, if they're going to run over them but we would like you to help us understand how that has affected their behavior and living patterns most importantly right yeah so this is actually probably the most important thing that we would be covering in this talk and about indies in general uh, because people who are getting indie dogs home or people who have seen indie dogs in a shelter and sometimes some stray dogs as well have been showing behavior issues and and some tendencies and stuff like that because we don't understand what this breed actually is about so let's go back to the basics um i want to urge all the viewers to just simplify their mind and just look out of their window or out to their stray dog that is you know that they are regularly in touch with and just observe their day to day activity for maybe one or two days and understand their lifestyle i am not talking any kind of special uh, you know um extra educated thing or rocket science which people will not be able to understand and and this is how it goes so in the morning your favorite stray dog wakes up and um, he needs breakfast right so he's going to spend a good 2 or 3 hours looking out for his breakfast um, right. in which survival mode hunting mode sniffing mode everything is active right um, and i want to point out that even stray puppies when they stop having their mother's milk at maybe 2 or 3 somewhere between 2 or 3 months of age they start hunting and scavenging for their food from that very day every single day all sure. three or two meals basically so a stray dog uh, to summarize it is a scavenger basically they are out on the hunt looking for leftovers looking for morsels of food um while they are hunting for it um a normal stray dog has to use their nose in a garbage dumpster to for even up to an hour to find maybe they'll use them sniff for 10 minutes and find one little piece of food then they'll sniff for 1 km of the street and maybe they'll find 100 grams more so they never know where the next meal will come from they might fight with their own parents and siblings for one little piece of chicken um and then they will still sleep satisfied about eating and they'll sleep next to each other so you know this is what a stray dog's life is all about it's all about fighting scavenging resource guarding hunting using their nose um surviving the traffic surviving the machine surviving all the animal haters for even one breakfast <laughs> so 7 a.m to 10 a.m the kind of job that they do um none of us or our dogs especially cannot even imagine going through that even in an entire year you know so um, so so that is one big difference that they are literally on ground they are the survivors in human element they would be the um, blue collar daily wage laborers who don't know whether they will get paid or not the next day they might you know break rocks for 8 hours and they might still not get fed you know so all these things only come in when you're working on the street more or less um Absolutely. as opposed to a pampered human being whose salary or pocket money is sponsored for them all their life similar to the pets that we have at home whose again food and everything is taken care yeah. of yeah <laughs> yeah maybe uh, of course we are going to uh, cover more about you know how to take care in fact we've got messages that have come in as well but yeah i do take care of a whole i mean my entire street we've got luckily we live in a place where uh, people you know uh, don't harm animals whether it's pets or strays so it's great everybody feeds them so i think uh, they are probably the more privileged set of pooches <laughs> but i'm sure there are different pockets around you know uh, the country around the world that people you know whatever we can do we try and help them so they don't really need to scavenge uh you know right. for their food and i'm sure we're going to get lots and tons of uh, those questions coming your way in fact um we've got muskan uh but yes we'll probably take one uh quick question from uh, the audience and then we'll get to the trivia question so muskan batia thank you so much and welcome to the session 
she says, I have just adopted a two years old Indy, having trouble keeping him inside the house. He keeps heading for the door. Need advice. So, um, uh, hi, Muskan. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for this question. So I want to start off with this, um, you know, explaining this concept. So it's easier for you to Google on forums about the behavior issue, because if you search my indie dog, you won't find tips, right? There's everything's there for labs and Weimaraners. So this thing is called yeah. uh, door dashing, D-O-O-R, door and dashing. Basically means that every time a door is open, your dog is um, has an instinct of running out. Um, Beagles have it, Siberian Huskies have it. These two breeds are very common with door dashing, Jack Russells, but it's not a common breed. Now, why do indie dogs have this door dashing? If I just explain to you how to stop it, you might be only scraping the surface. Um, to cut it short, you know, the main problem with door dashing, one is obviously you need to find a trainer to get proper lessons, to understand, you know, to teach your dog boundaries not to enter the kitchen, not to enter the bathroom. Similarly, when a door of the house is open, not to run out of it. But let's go to the deep, you know, rooted cause. Your dog ultimately is physically and mentally under channelized, under, um, you know, nourished, basically. However much we think that we are giving the walks and we are giving playtime and we're giving a lot of training and exercise, whatever it is that you're doing, your dog is telling you that it's a lot less than what he or she requires. That is why they have so much pent up energy that they're willing to run away from your house for a few hours and then probably come back or you guys will go after looking. And I mean, I'm not saying that this is what should be happening, but your dog is trying to tell you something that, hey, listen, if I was on the street, um, I would have been, you know, doing three kilometers of walking around, maybe 20 minutes of sniffing to get one meal. When I'm at home, I get 10 minutes of walking around the same area every day, no mental exercise, no sniffing, no, no harnessing my natural instincts. So I'm very bored and very frustrated and any little moment that I get, I will just run away. As much as a teenager in the lockdown with no classes, no school, no guitar, no sport, the moment they would see a door open or their friend sound coming from a neighborhood, they would want to run away. It's as simple as that. If the energy is not channelized, they will require somewhere to uh, vent it out. And lucky for you that your dog is running away. Most other Indies at this age, if they're not channelized, they start, you know, biting out of frustration. So if we haven't reached there, I think I think now is a good time to address these things with a professional near you. I hope, Muskan, that answers your question. But uh, yeah, I liked uh, uh, the first part of, uh, you know, I, I wasn't aware of uh, what exactly these Indies do because, like you said, the door dash, uh, you know. So yeah, I've learned something. So thank you so much for that, Adnan. Let's take one more question. We've got Kavita. She says, uh, Kavita Dhawan. Uh, welcome, Kavita. Thank you so much for your message. I'm fostering an injured stray for some time, but my two uh, and a half year old Beagle is not very happy with his presence in the house. Please advise. Um, hi, Kavita. Um, big, um, I know, th I mean, you're doing a great job by fostering this indie dog. And I really hope that this rehabilitation goes as well as planned and the, you know, dog finds a great home as well. Um, first thing that I want to suggest to you for this foster and all the future fosters that you take care of, that please open your mind and your heart to this concept that I'm trying to popularize in India about a uh, crate training okay this is some topic which is very um, controversial and frowned upon and people call it jail and prison and cage and shelter and whatnot but um, i mean if you i have an online tutorial um, so you can just search about you know crate training um, and you'll find a lot of my content online but imagine if you had two crate trained dogs in the house or if your original dog was crate trained or if your original dog is not crate trained, but every new foster that you get into the house, you have an enclosure for them. Uh, it will be very easy for you to take care of one dog, then positively send them into a crate, close that crate. You can open the other dog and none of them are going to have any stressful interactions between each other. Um, neither does your original dog deserve to be put under unnecessary stress uh, on a regular basis because new dogs are coming in right and the and the new dog um, already is you know injured and going through so much stress 
that we don't want you know that uh, while we are doing the healing and the rehab process the beagle ends up having some fight or some negative interaction that you know dips your progress down uh, you understand so so in this separate rooms and separate enclosures and having two crates or at least one crate for the foster or at least one crate for the original dog would really help in your hobby and your pursuit of you know fostering and rehabilitating dogs um, because i do fosters i guide fosters i have a lot of people all over you know uh, southeast of asia that have trained under me um, i tell them this very simple thing you get an injured dog <clears throat> always keep a very sanitized and clean uh, crate around so that that injured dog does not get further you know traumatized by your existing dogs and cats similarly your existing dogs and cats don't get traumatized by who is this new animal you know in my house without a formal introduction um on top of it the most important thing that you are doing this task out of joy of your heart but if you're always on edge oh my god this one will fight that one will fight it is you know this this task in itself becomes full of anxiety and stress and it does not give you that feeling of relief that you're ultimately you know doing this for so hope that answers your question uh look up about crate training you can probably google my name next to crate training and you'll find a lot of helpful information on google youtube facebook and all of that as well um you can dm you know pet fed and purina pro plan directly to you know find out more about these things as well later thank you so much for that and yeah kudos to you because we need more people like you adnan to spread the word about md dogs because a lot of people still are uh, you know not aware about the things uh and uh, the right knowledge in fact you know of how to treat uh indie dog strays so thanks for that <laughs> all right so you take like just a quick second break <laughs> it's time for a trivia question and i hope you're all ready to answer our very first question of uh, today's session so here is your question are indie dogs the same as indian pariah dogs once again are indie dogs the same as indian pariah dogs you have two options option 1 true option 2 false so quickly comment in the comments box right now and of course we're going to be picking out uh, winners at the end of this session so once again are indie dogs the same as indian pariah dogs option 1 true option 2 false so we're still getting lots of uh, uh, questions and of course we're going to try and answer everyone's questions but of course let's get back to you adnan there are a lot of talks about how training an indie dog can be difficult in fact i can see a couple of messages also you know uh, about training uh, our indie dog so how should we be thinking about training and upbringing when we get an indie dog home so of course do help us understand the level of trainability and i'm going to coincide that one uh, with prachi's question because she has an 11 and a half year old indie and he or she uh, because she uh, his age yeah so he seems to have confusion these days in understanding commands is it because of his age so i guess uh, yeah we've got a couple of them so we can answer this question about age and of course how do we train our indie dogs um i i would answer this um, uh, you know question that we have been asked first by um, by the viewers about your dog turning 11 and a half and not being responsive and stuff um this is a totally different thing your dog you know is a senior dog now you know crossing that 8 9 and 10 year barrier um you know obviously they are going to be uh, physically and mentally you know pretty fit and healthy but at the same point of time like you know in in a general human equivalence i'd say that once you are with a 75 80 year old um in general you don't expect them you know if it's a 2 3 year old person or a 75 80 year old person you don't expect them to be obedient or compliant you just learn to coexist with them you respect their boundaries their wants and needs you don't pressurize them and push them on the edge too much and they respect yours as well you obviously you know keep your foot down and keep your structure and discipline intact um always keep positive and do not over sympathize them but don't expect too much out of them this is something that you know keeping the trainer in me aside um i mean the trainer and me would say i've trained a 15 year old as well a 12 year old as well if it has to it can be done but generally if it was my own dog and i see even my dogs who are turned 7 and 8 i just pamper them i let them be you know if they've had a glorious you know dog training career whether it's film or therapy or whatever i don't pressurize them to always be compliant or obedient through the house 
but just make sure that you are engaged with the dog and you keep them physically and mentally fit um hope that answers your question you can just drop your comment with a yes or no as well um coming to your question um um belavi about about yeah. um you know how should we take training of an indie dog forward um i want to dissect this question a little bit and before we sure. specify indie dogs um me being a professional dog trainer for for a long time now i want to talk about how should we take dog training um most of the people who are here who are watching a lot of the people who are not and in general all of us who are involved with dogs we should take dog training and consider dog training um important before we get a dog especially and then the moment we get a dog and within the first 6 months or a year of having the dog in the house if that gets done whether it's through the internet whether it's through online courses online consults now with covid you can connect with any trainer across the world so that's not even a problem whether it's a home visiting trainer or sending your dog for boarding training whatever but you commit to dog training and education about uh canine training and behavior when you think about getting a dog one so that you make the right choice then when you have just gotten the dog two so that you are in the right direction of upbringing right when people come to me after two or three years of having raised their dog in an absolutely like you know unorganized random way now their dog is out of their hands and it's snapping and lunging and barking and anxious then they think that okay we could consider training so you know the the how low respect there is for education and dog training where you know when kids come to this planet we start their schooling at the exact age of whatever 2 3 4 years of age whenever their cognition develops right uh, we don't say that okay let the kid be however they are but at 17 or 18 if they murder someone then we will send them to school otherwise it's not necessary right this mindset was there many decades ago and still might be there in villages but that's not how educated people think for their human children but for dogs we think like this i'll speak in hindi a bit ki kya zarurat hai training ki training mein paise kyun barbaad kar rahe hain sare trainer sham hote hain hum to khud hi kar lenge all that is fine but if you know the right way of raising your dog right from the beginning you are not going to accumulate problems and then come to a trainer and expect them to be solved in 10 classes or one month or whatever um so indie dog aside this is what should be the case for all dogs start early so you will struggle a lot less you will have to pay a lot less and you will not consider abandonment don't start at one year or two years or four years or five years and then say that oh my god it's you know how long will it take or how many sessions will it take or how much money it will take because you've transferred all your accumulated stress of 3 years uh, compounded it into a box and thrown that pressure onto a trainer because you are paying them and you feel like you know you sort of own them now now coming to indie dogs how do you how do you consider training indie dogs again like i said start early right be consistent with them respect indie dogs like you have gotten home a labrador or a boxer or a belgian malinois or a rottweiler or a pitbull you will not compromise on their training because everywhere it's written train them early train them early you know if it's if you're a responsible pet parent you will start early with them do not keep that sympathy element in your head that oh i have done that godly deed of rescuing the animal so that i'm not going to invest any further in the grooming training medicare medicare and any of those things So if you start early if you do two sessions a day of 5 5 minutes duration each doing the right kind of training teaching the right rules teaching the right things for your dog to learn right right boundaries and systems then you're not going to face a lot of these problems later on uh, your question about whether they are stubborn or not actually they are not they love food so all forms of positive reward based training will go a long way as long as you are making them learn things for food uh training them under pressure or stress or using harsh methods or punitive methods will not work that is when they can become suppressed um and independent now yes indie dog is autonomous indie dog is intelligent indie dog is independent because they have to think f- for themselves all the time but most importantly they are a pack animal they like to keep their yeah. leaders happy so if you have asked them to do something and if you have paid them for it with food for 6 months regularly 
they will listen to you and they will do those things right their independence starts settling in from the age of 7 to 9 months so between 7 to 14 months you will see your indie puppy totally transform one month to seven months they would be perfect sweet friendly happy jovial and what not and then comes in the testosterone and estrogen first of all right. the hormones secondly yeah. comes in the suspicion the resource guarding the barking at the doorbells being wary of strangers all of that protective instincts all of those watchdog instincts that are part of their genetics so before seven months if you were able to establish your leadership your rules your obedience then you will be very successful i have helped people train indie dogs as highly as a fully trained therapy dog with an over 3000 patients under her professional experience her name is fulki she is featured in media all across she's been featured by pet fed guys as well you can see her on our k9 healers program too um she's an indie dog I have trained indie dogs for explosive detection. I don't deploy them for a few reasons. I will speak about that later. But they have promise and potential to be dogs mm. for the blind, to be therapy dogs, right. and sniffer dogs. Maybe not in professional capacity, but very much as a hobby and for a day-to-day -day practice. But if you just delay it, thinking that it's a stray dog and why should I pay and why should I educate and let them be how they are, and then when they bite someone important. then you think that either we train them or we dump them so this whole right. you know state of mind in itself needs to change and it's not restricted right. to indies it's equal for a lab or a maltese or any dog for that matter the training only becomes necessary when you're on the verge of getting rid of your dog basically right absolutely so well said adnan thank you so much in fact i don't think we should even uh, discriminate canines as such because they all belong to the same uh, species yeah ultimately <laughs> it's just an animal right different shapes yeah. sizes and colors but the mammal is more or less the same the same it's the same the is the same it might exactly. be little difference of their size and how much they eat and maybe one gets tired sooner or later but the dog's mind always thinks the same for the same. me indie yeah. is rank 1 because they can survive without us too right so they obviously need to have their independence their intelligent and their strength and you know to put it shortly they have the best street smarts because anyone who's raised on the streets and has gone ground up right they started on the street maybe begging then developing then they right. are a great entrepreneur today they would have more of the hustle they would have more of the intelligence and they will not be uh, you know um covering after people as much as someone who started from the top and he was always reporting to someone on the top if absolutely you know, human, 100% uh, uh, example can help you with that please yeah sure sure <laughs> <laughs> so in fact uh, we have anuranan and he says uh, mind is very friendly even with strangers how to make him alert towards strange people because that was uh, part of what you had mentioned so i just wanted to just quickly uh, you know get your uh, opinion on this i mean it's great to have friendly indies because most often uh, people first of all people who uh, you know work late in the night and when they come back that is the biggest biggest issue with uh, people you know traveling back home and then exactly. so uh, so like you said they are packs they are pack hunters they are together always and then they always you know come out in like Charging you know huge people, pack basically. yeah So it's great. I would like to say Anuranan. It's great to have a friendly indie. But yes, of course, Adnan, you're the expert. So I'm <laughs> I'm with ahead. you on this one, Melody. Actually, yeah. I would say that count your blessings. And if you are saying that your indie dog is friendly with every single person that enters your house, um, just you know, pray that this stays forever, and just reinforce your dog to be friendly with everyone that comes in. because inherently in terms of genetics they are supposed to only accept their immediate family which are which is the people in the regular household anybody else they are genetically supposed to be suspicious of them so when the doorbell rings when the delivery people come in they are supposed to bark and be wary of them because that's what keeps their survival instinct intact if an indie dog on the street was sleeping and they weren't alert of a leopard or whatever any other predator right. they wouldn't be able to survive right so they have that protective instinct that watch dog that alert instinct but i would want anybody's in house pet indie dog to have a lot less of that instinct 
right because i train you know real security dogs for you know parliament and special forces and ipl and all of that and i can tell you that if you are looking for a guard right either hire a trained human guard or commit yourself like you know commit yourself truly to a trained canine guard like a proper guarding dog which does not just come by adopting an indie or rescuing a rottweiler or going to a shelter and picking a german shepherd because google says that these are the top 10 guard breeds that are available it is not as automatic as that just having a gun in your house does not protect you knowing how to use it how to protect yourself is what is you know ultimately going to go a long way just having somebody standing outside alarm sirens they don't work security systems also need to be installed they also need to be trained so i train actual guard dogs and i know how much effort it goes in almost up until 18 months to 3 years we are constantly training them for real world scenarios of combat and you know tactical situations and even then we can only hope that when you know when a dog is hounded by four criminals trying to shoot at them stab them they can put up a fight right that is how much i train my guard dogs that four armed assailants can come and rob me and my my main dog will always be able to fend them off like even an entire mob of humans my i can count on my main dog for it um if you want a, your dog to be aggressive or suspicious or barking towards people um you will not be able to control it like i can tell you how to do that i just don't find it uh, responsible of me to do that here on the live chat a lot of people will start making their dogs aggressive first i will obviously be attached to that suggestion secondly you won't know how to stop that dog so first right. if you can probably send me videos of your dog doing down and sit and obeying you completely when you say sit when you say heel when you say down all of those things are done i can teach you how to teach the watch command or a you know guarding command to your dog where he just barks and alerts when you right. ask them but before that your dog has to be fully basic obedience trained and as per my standards if i look at them till then i will not give that you know suggestion on a live chat i my suggestion would be that you are lucky and this is how your dog should be ideally <laughs> wonderful thank you so much for that adnan yes of course anurandan if you would like to send uh, you know a personal message to adnan i'm sure you'll be more than happy to help him out so that's uh, but yes i would agree uh, the friendlier the better <laughs> it's uh, better for everybody and then everyone lives in you know in peace so that's a good thing all right so uh, we've got a uh, couple more questions in fact lots of messages coming in but uh, i need to take a quick trivia question once again and then we'll get back to you adnan just a second of a break for you <laughs> all right so what is the most common coat color amongst indie dogs that's our trivia question number 2 for this session once again what is the most common coat color amongst indie dogs option 1 brown and white option 2 black and white once again option 1 brown and white option 2 black and white what is the most common coat color amongst indie dogs do uh, put in your uh, right answers in the comment section that's where we will be picking out the winners who will walk away at the end of the session with a uh, exclusive hamper courtesy of purina pro plan so adnan is it difficult for an indie dog to adjust to a city home life given regard to their usual lifestyle in fact we i did go through some of the messages that came in you know uh, you know especially when you shift them uh, you or take them along with you as per my knowledge i think they are you know they're very well adapted because like you said they're street smart they have lived on the street all their life but i'm sure a lot of us and in fact the audience would like to know you know uh, does that uh, can they adjust will it change their temperaments in fact so how do we go about that so um interesting question but at the same point of time um the thing is that street dogs are made and born in the city itself so they are very right. used to the city um the only thing is that when we take them away from their natural upbringing of always being out on the street 24/7 growing up spending their life on the street bringing bringing them inside a household um the difference of the difference is not adjustment to an environment the difference is that a dog has come into a human culture into a human lifestyle 
and the human is not doing a good enough job for keeping that dog happy and making that dog integrated into that house um how should i put it so you know all of the common things that indie dogs face is that they are scared of new things like machines blenders dryers balloons these are pet indie dogs that i'm talking about they're very skittish nervous they look at a new dog they get scared they look at a new person they get scared they see a baby on a stroller they might start barking and all that why are they you know a bag full of rattling nerves when you bring that dog home and that very dog who's on the street can you know get hit by a bike and still be walking like nothing happened what is the difference the difference is human intervention okay mm. the most important thing that we need to keep in mind is that just getting home an indie dog and you know going through that you know propaganda of indies are better than anyone and because we have adopted indies we are better than anyone the thing is yes all of that is phenomenal the only added point that i want to say is don't stop there just because you have gotten an indie dog home your contribution and your effort should not stop there itself just understand that your dog has physical and mental requirements secondly you have to do early socializing and early foundation so that your dog gets used to things like machines vet groomer construction main road traffic uh dogs and cats all these things that your dog would have seen on the street or all these things that your dog would see through the rest of their life they don't get that kind of exposure because we just keep them in the house we don't plan any enrichment or anything uh rewarding for them through the day the only thing we plan for is feed the dog walk the dog that's about it a lot of times even that is not being done in a proper way that why should i buy food i'll just give leftover whatever i won't get too much into that but the thing is that most importantly we have to consider that this breed would have been exposed to construction they would be sleeping next to a construction site yeah but your pet dog at home when they hear any power tool they are being themselves and they are scared and they are on people are giving anxo care and stress relief tablets and have you seen anyone giving anxiety medicine to the dog on the street but when you're picking a puppy from the street and he comes home why does he need anxiety medicine what is the difference that has come in it is not the house it is the people who are trying to make this into a human being try to live like us in our house this is how things go we are a veg household you can't have non veg we you will be tired outside you will behave you know so all our rules are intact but we are not willing to change our rules to the extent that okay why you are feeding your indie puppy maybe turn on the hair dryer next to them so that they are used to the sound while you are feeding your indie puppy maybe take them for a car ride so that for the rest of the year they are not puking in your car every time you take them in right while you are giving food to your indie puppy take them to the vet and don't get any treatment done just have a positive veterinary association next with a meal as a reward and come back tell me who is making these efforts while raising their puppy if you get a one or two month old pup and you just put in these six months of the kind of program that i give to people who take courses for me or who send their dog for board and train they have a fixed program and those dogs are as i like to put it they are bomb proof right those indies can be next to war and fireworks and guns and they are not scared those indies will listen to me even though there's a cat running in front of them it's right. all about starting early it's the same breed that i or people who train with me can do wonders and it's the same breed that you are struggling with because um, you know you stopped at the point of me being a great person because i took the indie you don't want to go beyond that how should i make them happy how should i actually keep their mental well being as a priority as much yeah. as their diet and their medicine and their jackets and their cool things um if they are not happy they will not be happy in a sweater and sunglasses having really nice branded food right, right. trust me that's what would be the case for humans too <laughs> but that's, that's the same <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely yes. Okay, so uh, uh, I would definitely want you to uh, you know share some views on adopting and semi-adopting, fostering indie dogs with our audience. But uh, could you quickly tell us about food? Because I can see a lot of people have messaged in about you know because we're so used to giving food that we eat, 
to animals, not just Indies, you know, sometimes even our pets. So uh, I think that would be, uh, you know, if you can give us uh, advice on that, is it okay to give? Because I did have, who is this? Shishri says, yeah, I feed uh, my two indie dogs with home cooked food and no packaged dog food. Does that complete the nutritional requirement? Also, we had um, uh, biscuits, you know. Everyone seems to, uh, I've seen people, uh, I know it's out of care and concern that they, you know, give them biscuits. But of course, I know it's loaded with sugar, especially when you give them the glucose biscuits. So a uh, quick uh, opinion from you, Adnan, about food. For um, so I have, I have, you know, certain points about food, which, you know, they, they go on a wide spectrum of opinions. Some of my inputs, 30% so people would agree with some other inputs, 30 other percent of the people would agree with. That's how it goes. So, you know, in my training center, yes, I cook fresh food on a regular basis. But I have me and my mother and the rest of my team, we have done years of research on what optimum canine nutrition looks like. And it is very protein intensive. So if my Belgian Malinois or my indie dog, who's about 20, 25 kilos, if they are being fed one kg of food in a day, 70% of that should be protein. Out of that protein, you should be rotating that protein as well. 20% uh, should be grain, out of which you can't feed Atta and Maida. Those are the worst form of grain. I feed rice because I have, you know, 40, 50 dogs, but uh, you can feed even oats and suji and a lot of lighter grain if you, if you can manage to, if you have lesser dogs. And then the rest of the 10% is veggies. If you are a vegetarian household with a veggies intensive diet, you're just doing paneer and veggies and rice and grain and roti and biscuits, that's not optimum nutrition. Just cooking fresh does not mean anything. Your dog could be having fresh dal chawal and he's not healthy and happy. Your it could be tasting phenomenal. It could be the best in the country. But that's <laughs> not the optimum nutrition for them. They don't derive protein from tofu and paneer and the vegetarian veg vegetables that give protein to humans or, you know, all of those things. They derive protein from animal proteins, actually. So that's right. very important. Um, so on that note, um, the best nutrition for me would be frozen raw prey type food, like literally frozen raw animal, which is very uh, 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 in, like close to impossible to source and everything properly in a tropical country like India. Um, fresh food, if you can research, scientifically research, not emotionally that, oh, I cook this well or I know broccoli is great, so I will feed my dogs broccoli. Vegan is the new wave, so turn your dog vegan. Don't fall for any propaganda. Research the optimum canine nutrition, good for the instincts. If you can do that, cook, make a recipe, you know, feed fresh. But for me, ultimately, the most favorite nutrition, um, favorite food, diet, um, and I'm not saying it because I'm on this live of the brand, it is packaged food for various reasons. Reason being that one, that this, whichever company it might be, they actually invest in researching in a lab what the exact percentage of everything should be going into that, you know, into that packet, right? Um, so that means that all of the right ingredients and the right percentages of things are compressed in a form that they can be fed to a dog. Right. So obviously that makes life very easy in a city or urban kind of a uh, living that you don't have to cook every day. You just open a bag, count the pellets and feed it to a dog. Ideally, after having done some mental exercise, don't feed it for free. But, you know, this really helps because the dog food companies, premium dog food and, you know, renowned dog food companies always follow these, you know, percentages very, very properly. Now, a lot of people do abide by feeding packaged food to the strays on the street as well, just for the cleanliness sake, because, you know, moist and soggy food is not always ideal to just keep dumping on the streets. Then people respect Indies enough to not throw only their leftovers. They actually feed optimum nutrition. So if you want to feed a healthy diet, you don't have time or you're in a vegetarian household, then a good packaged food is a great solution for you, actually. All vegetarian households should stop feeding whatever they're cooking at home. Time to time treats are fine and shift to packaged food because you don't have to touch meat. But you are not ruining your dog's health by pushing your you know, uh, reservations onto the dog. Coming to biscuits, there is no requirement for biscuits. Biscuits is a commercial product. Um, and Atta and Maida, these 
corn flour and wheat flour and all these things are very harmful for dogs because they damage the gut very highly number one oh. secondly um um if to put it into analogy like if you get give a three year old four year old kid red bull um or like yeah. lots of sugar or pepsi they don't know what to do with that energy they'll scream they'll cry they'll howl they'll draw on the walls they'll smash things they'll run around and suddenly they'll crash and they'll pass out but they would have caused a ruckus for two hours because of what you're giving to the dog atta and maida giving rotis to your dog um who don't exercise who just sit at home all day probably walk for 5 minutes to pee and poop and come back giving them lots of atta maida roti bread biscuits is like giving red bull to an infant it doesn't do them any good it is not nutritious they don't need carbs the only carbs they need they can derive from any other fiber that they you know absorb right they don't need the amount of carbs that we are loading them with now the amount of carbs that they have in their body it starts showing in hair fall in dandruff in itchiness but also right. in behavior irritable mm-hmm. behavior the dog is calm and they'll suddenly snap you touch right. the dog and they'll suddenly snap that added excessive energy which they don't know what to do with will start coming off in harmful ways if you're not conscious about nutrition and diet hope that right. summarizes everything awesome <laughs> got so many tips from you and of course after <laughs> all of that is out of you know should be thrown out of the door cuz yeah it <laughs> doesn't give them any uh, nutrition as well but it's it's difficult in a, a vegetarian uh, you know kind of a household because since like you just mentioned but yeah there's so many alternatives these days you don't really need to touch meat if you know if that's something that you don't want to do and you can give them the packed uh, and packaged food great so uh, before i move to the trivia question our final one for this evening uh, could you give us uh, some views on adopting and fostering and se- semi adopting of uh, indies yeah absolutely i mean this is my this is my favorite topic because without without this uh you know without me wanting so much from indie dogs i wouldn't be here um and for all the viewers and people watching um i wouldn't be where i am in my career if not for indie dogs so indie. you know when all through my childhood i couldn't really raise my own pet dog because of you know um area restrictions and being in a you know smaller place bigger family right. and things like that so i would always be spending time on the streets i wasn't very social with humans or very extroverted so all of my childhood friends pretty much uh, can be summarized as stray dogs and memories with them so all of the things that i've learned about dog training in real world experiences all on the street from stray dogs so before we push into the adoption and the fostering part we have to push into learning about them talking about them discussing about them sharing knowledge about them and most importantly their population control the neutering and spaying because without the neutering and spaying we would always be running in circles and we would help 500 dogs but 50000 more would come in to the picture for us to help if we don't neuter or spay that dog outside there would be a litter we would try to push them for people to adopt some would get run over some would die of parvo i'm really i'm being cruel you know talking about talking like this right now but dialogue and debates and discussions and knowledge about strays is very important if we don't talk about how they think how they behave what keeps them happy what is right for them what is wrong for them everyone from their individual emotions would be doing random things okay so coming back to fostering and adopting anyone who's into fostering should be um you know should be well versed with this concept of crate training otherwise you cannot do justice to fostering multiple dogs without hampering the uh, you know uh, vibe of the like the whole sanctity of your household or doing justice to your rehabilitation because the dog will always feel confused in a new environment so fostering always is very very successful if you if if the handler is crate trained or knows how to do crate training um coming to adoption i would have two points one for people who are adopting and another for people who uh, are doing the adoption or who give the dog out you know uh, the adoption counselors or the placement agencies uh, i have some pointers for them as well so right. uh, coming to the people who are taking an indie dog home uh 
number one thing i'm really grateful to all of you thank you so much for doing that uh, and choosing uh, something outside of those social brands and everything but uh, and like i have said in a couple of my you know statements before that don't just stop on that high note or you know on that pedestal that um, you know now i've adopted an indie and that's you know the best thing i could do learn and research to make your indie puppy the most obedient the most well trained the most sociable the easiest to travel with kind of dog that you can make it an example a global phenomenon so that everyone from around the world acknowledges this breed as for a few people who have been doing this for a, for the past few years who have been getting these dogs adopted in holland and canada and us and and transporting right. them uh, you know safely as well because yeah. a lot of people abroad now are not interested in in european or american breeds as much as saving a life right yeah. having said that keeping that in mind once you get an indie dog home whether it's a small apartment whether it's a big farmhouse whether it's a ranch it's not about the space right it's not about the uh, width or the vastness of the space that's not it right because when dogs sleep they always sleep in a fetal position only it's not about the space they get to roam around it's what you as a parent to your indie dog are able to provide in terms of physical and mental well being throughout the day can you keep them physically and mentally happy uh, someone who is in a uh, you know thatched roof broken slum kind of a setting can also have a very happy and obedient indie dog and someone with maybe 500 crores and a 10 acre farm could have a very frustrated unhappy indie as well because all they can do or think about is hiring more people for it or buying more things for him but not really developing a kind of a bond which comes through walking training uh learning new things developing activities so anyone who adopts an indie dog try and go for pre adoption counseling from a renowned behavior specialist speak to them show the videos of the dog that you're about to adopt get the inputs and ideas in case they so say that this one will not work out for you respect that idea as well however much however harsh it may be for you because right now i might sound harsh by saying no this dog will not suit your house because you have elderly or kids or this dog is high energy or can get reactive uh, that might be harsh and i might be stopping you from adopting that dog today but uh, what's harsher is making the wrong decision ruining the dog's life and then wanting to abandon that dog and looking for places to dump that dog mm. right that is much worse because you gave him a belief and then again took it away right so it's right. much better to do your assessment very objectively without emotions without any pressure without any force and especially not doing it impulsively that's the most important thing don't go by impulse that a puppy gave a cute face i don't know what i planned but i bring one home and we'll see as it goes and we'll wing it because that is when you're going to struggle for the rest of your years you wouldn't know what your dog is thinking they might charge at you when they're sleeping they might bite you when they're having food they might attack your maid and you'll always be confused after a few incidents your family will start pressurizing you to want to get rid of that dog i've heard right. this you know bracket of a story this category of a story now countless number of times people who might be listening one or two of them might be able to relate that everyone's pressurizing me my dog is so stressful and all of that if you got training before like i said in my previous questions i'm building it up you know from the earlier questions if you got training before if you got advice beforehand it would have helped you to choose the right kind of a dog if you have chosen the dog get advice the very first day that you get the dog get training that time so the trainer or the behavior specialist the counselor will tell you how to go from here and how to design your life to keep yourself also you know sane and happy and and you know in uh, uh, in harmony with the dog and the dog should also be stable and happy and raised in the right direction right if you go for a trainer once you have created a mess and then you give them an ultimatum and a deadline and a timeline it will not be as helpful and as you know ideal now uh, i know i'm 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 stretching this answer a little bit now my point um a little bit of a controversial point um, for the rescuing agencies and the facebook adopting counselors and and coordinators and and one point for them and the other point for the stray feeders 
um i won't you know uh, go too much into the psychology aspect of it but the thing is that a lot of people um are doing it you know not for the well being of the dog as much as um as a feel good in, inherent validation for them that you know i do charity i take care of my right. stories i do yeah. charity i sit on facebook and i see one dog for adoption and then i go to my friend and i say here this is the dog you should be adopting okay so right. in these things we are not respecting the animal okay in your mind you might be thinking that oh ye bechara facebook pe kitna cute hai iske koi bhi ghar mil jaye iske liye acha hoga and then you right. will try to push that dog to any first family that comes your way who are right. looking for a dog right and i've seen that a lot nowadays this you know indie dogs has become more of a propaganda than a respect nobody is neutering them nobody is limiting the population nobody is publishing them there's no films about them but everybody is saying <coughs> adopt indies they are better than breeds all of those things okay now anybody who's looking for a boxer or a rottweiler and they have a kid or anything right people will push them to get an indie dog sometimes against their wishes they would get one they will not be prepared for one 6 8 months later this is the same family that will fill up the shelters so a lot of you know um, uh, a severe deficiency of knowledge awareness and understanding in the rescuers and the adoption coordinators when they force people to adopt indie puppies and indie dogs because they see log and they see dog and all of that i love these campaigns as long as they have some depth to it when they become propaganda that i want to push my agenda i don't care if this indie dog bites the 2 year old infant tomorrow right but my agenda is being pushed that i am adopt getting 5 million indie dogs adopted the problem is that these people these rescuers and coordinators because none of them have taken a professional course none of them have opened a book about dogs they have not spent an hour of research about dogs their understanding of dogs comes from their emotions okay and they just force indie dogs into random homes without understanding that if i forced a rottweiler or a belgian shepherd into a home um who has no experience of animals they will go wrong with it right and after they go wrong there is no support system we start blackmailing those people that hey if you abandon the dog you will be in trouble and all of that and we embarrass and put them through guilt so this whole cycle of flooding homes with the wrong adoptions then disappearing and the wrong placements makes it a big problem for trainers and for shelters because you know our facebook you know thing really went well for our feeling that look this dog i got adopted from sms and whatsapp and facebook but you didn't really assess the dog's behavior whether he actually fits into the family's household um and you just did it through photos and for you that was the ultimate deed so a lot of times our philanthropic you know psychology can damage the nature and ecology and a lot of families and households a 5 year traumatic experience raising a dangerous dog in your house can put you against dogs for life as well please understand right sorry it became a bit of a rant but i wanted uh, to explain this in as many perspectives as possible great great thank you so much i know we're running out of time we just uh, have got time for maybe a couple more questions but i need to quickly ask our final trivia question but thank you so much adnan for you know putting it out literally for everybody to know the reason to adopt and not just you know throw away literally some of them i mean it's just not indie dogs with like you know over the you know last couple of years because of the seriousness of what the world is going through people have just abandoned even their pets so you know it's just not the indies it's all all animals which is quite sad but i hope you know it all comes back Uh, together soon okay your final uh, trivia question for the evening i know we're running a little late but yes we'll try and wrap it all up quickly so what type of fur coat do indie dogs have once again what type of fur coat do indie dogs have option 1 long coat and option 2 short coat so one or two please put down your right answers in the comment section of course we're picking up the winners in just a bit so i have a quick question uh, for you that's come in from uh, Uh, one of the pages so uh i don't know who this person is but uh this person says hi i've adopted a few indies had picked them up when street dogs had had litters and the pups bark at strangers but when the stranger approaches the pup it runs away 
uh, how do I bring up uh, its courage to stand up to strangers? So basically, uh, it's not just the person who's just messaged, it's everybody in general. You know, when it comes to strangers and people that they're not familiar with, I think the entire idea is how uh, do pups or even uh, the adult dogs, you know, how to deal with strangers. I think if you can give us that view and help uh, this person who just messaged you. Right. So it would be, I mean, I am. Um, um, I want to plug in the fact, again, the importance of, you know, taking this very deeply on you have a puppy and this is the perfect time to commit yourself to a trainer or a training school or to online research on the right way of socializing your puppy. A lot of forward and backward forcing where your puppy is put forward into a place where they are not comfortable and then somebody tries to go after the puppy and that is, you know, that traumatizes them. And we are just experimenting and adding all of that chaos. A lot of people think that this is socializing. Pick them up, throw it amongst friends a lot. And then when they're snappy, then throw them away. All of this manhandling because we don't know any better can right. become a damaging aspect later on simplest thing is that let the puppy sniff and explore people on their own let the people be sitting as they are without always trying to pounce at the dog ignore them let the puppy bark if he wants to in the very beginning and again use positive reinforcement use rewards feed the meals next to the people and eventually the trust will start to develop right this can be a simplistic explanation from me but i would say that it is very important to have a pet behavior a dog behavior counselor who you trust who can guide you either whether it's for one session or one course or a training program but if they tell you the right do's and don'ts and if you and go with a credible one don't always go with the cheapest and the nearest and the easiest check their background right and and go for the credible one you will find and in fact you will find so much information on the internet on right way to socialize your dog that you wouldn't have to go through these experiments i'm happy that you're asking me this question as your dog is a pup because this very puppy if not raised properly one year down the line you will be desperately seeking trainers because this dog has had many biting incidents and dangerous uh, scenarios and all of that so simply do not give free food to your dog make them work for the food use the food to expose and desensitize the dog to humans cats other animals dryers machinery sounds anything that you think that might scare my dog later fireworks gunshots feed them and expose them to the stimulus in a controlled fashion under a professional trainer's guidance if you do it, if you have all this foundation ready before the age of six, seven months, you will have a tremendous journey with your Indian, um, you know, in, indie dog for the next entire decade above, right? And you will not struggle as so many of you are. <laughs> of <late>. Yeah, <laughs> everyone seems to have that uh, same struggle, of course, when it comes to indies. So uh, one more quick question. Uh, are indie dogs prone to any kind of disease or illness in general? Or, I mean... At the end of the day, they are canines, they are dogs. So all of them are prone to diseases. But yeah, your opinion on that. Um, one funny thing that I want to point out to you, and you can you can see this observation that we have dogs on the street, okay? Um, uh, and and we have we have picked up indie dogs from the street and put them in our homes also. The ones that right. we are feeding on the street, sometimes they're eating garbage, sometimes they're eating good food also, and whatever. But we've seen very few of them. With cataract, tumor, thyroid, diabetes, arthritis, all of these things. Um, right. But indie dogs, as soon as they come into a home environment, I don't know whether it's radiation, whether it's the you know fumes of the fridge and bios and all of the gadgets and all of the humanistic unnatural things. One. Secondly, like I said, that it is us humans who have killed the ecology and the willpower of the animal of scavenging, sniffing, hunting, exercising. All of that deteriorating and making them into a city dweller has yeah. increased the number of illnesses that have developed. As I would say would be the case that if we are in some distant place in Kashmir, you will not see chronic illnesses as much as you would see in Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, Chennai, New York, London, all of these, you know, prime places which have added pollution, added radiation, added stress and all of those things combined basically. So it's mostly the indie dogs that are in the homes that develop 
um, health issues. I'm not saying that indie dogs on the street are totally free of health issues, but we mostly run them to the vet for being hit brutally or being injured brutally or visible health issues. Rest of the things, right. they are actually because they have a fit life, an active life, and they use their nose and find the right nutrition that they are after, they don't fall ill as much as our home dogs do. Would you agree yeah. to this observation a little bit? <laughs> it's yeah, of course. Mind. I mean, because uh, most important... All of us can make, we have an indie dog at home and we have a yeah. dog on the street. Apparently, in our mind, that dog has a worse life, but he has a better health, better, better mental well-being, better fitness, better everything, better exposure. This dog apparently has a better life, but he's really bored, really frustrated, really unhealthy, really unhappy. So we <laughs> have to break this gap. <laughs> so at the end of the day, we should all live on the streets then. As Even to us, can, to better know. our yeah. immune system. <laughs> a bit okay, of rain wonderful. and sunshine never hurt anyone. So. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I agree. Well, thank you so much. I know we had so many questions that came in, uh, but I'm, I'm sure Adnan has helped everybody in uh, you know every possible way that he could have right now in answering the questions. Um, so uh, we also had a contest running from the Purina Pro Plans page, which was posted on the 8th of February. So I request you, Adnan, to share with our pet parents the answer for the same. And the question was, indie dogs are adaptable and quick learners. Of course, we had two options, A, true, B, false. Adnan, could you please give us the right answer for it? Um, yeah, the answer for me, yes, my, my most favorite breed in knee dogs are probably the most adaptable and the quickest learners because, you know, that is ingrained in them through Darwinism and through evolutionary instincts that they have to adapt to the challenges that the world throws at them on a daily basis. The pure breed dogs are a lot less adaptable. We have to make the environment adapt to them. Uh, but indie dogs can adapt to the worst of heat, the worst of cold, uh, worst of climate, worst of environments, and their body and their mind can adapt if they have the right guidance and right leadership. Absolutely. So, of course, true. That is the, the right answer. Thank you for yeah. that. And of course, big, big thank you to each and every one of you, uh, you know, for your participation. Our winners from today's trivia contest are Muskan Bhatia, Shrishti Rani and Preeti Ashok. Congratulations to all of you. Kindly DM your complete details to Purena Pro Plan India. Of course, I know uh, you would like to uh, know the answer. So quickly, the first question was, are Indie dogs the same as Indian pariah dogs? The right answer is false. Your second question was, what is the most common coat color amongst Indie dogs? And the correct answer is brown and white. And of course, the final uh, question was, what type of fur coat do Indie dogs have? And the correct answer is the short code. So, of course, yes, time's up. And uh, I want to, you know, thank you all, especially Adnan. Thank you so much. Parting words from you, Adnan, for everybody, uh, you know, uh, if you'd like to add any more before we close. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Melody, for hosting me here. And thank, thank you, you to the entire <laughs> team of PetFed and Purina Pro Plan India for this wonderful series of conversations. I'm, I'm really excited to keep attending and learning much more as a viewer as well. Uh, for all the people who have been patiently watching, um, you guys are wonderful for having chosen Indie Dog as your companion. Uh, just remember that take them out for one, one and a half kilometer every morning and evening, twice a day in new areas. Let them sniff and see and hear new things every day out on walks. Don't make their walks boring. When you bring them back home, make them sniff for their food for at least 15-20 minutes. Then commit to at least 5 minutes of basic obedience session or house manners. Then give them their meal. That means the dog is working for their food. They are doing physical exercise, then mental exercise, then training, then food. It doesn't take too long. It takes about an hour in total, right? And your dog would be physically and mentally always channelized. Remember one thing, take your dogs on road trips, take your dogs out in markets, take your dog on the road. Do not just limit them to walking in the neighborhood and bringing them back. Integrate them as much into a part of your life as you can. 
the country is slowly and slowly becoming more accepting of pets almost everywhere whether it's markets or hotels or banks i took my malanoy to the bank to sign a few things and they were happy to bring him in because he's so well trained i sat next to like he sat, sat down next to me and i did all right. the paperwork check books everything and they were totally fine with it i was so surprised and happy so yeah so give the right structure and the right life we you have all of us to guide you guys as well do not um you know delay it to the point of no return where you know your dogs become very stubborn and very adamant and probably dangerous to you and your family and maybe dangerous right. to society let's not leave it to that point let's catch on these things a lot sooner proactive training and education always always helps thank you so much guys wonderful i mean like everybody at home wherever you are i mean big round of applause to adnan you know for spending <laughs> uh, this amazing time with us and sharing all of your advices and tips and uh, you know we need to be a little bit more welcoming to our indie dogs and thank you for Absolutely. being the advocate for that so it means thank a lot to everybody who takes care of indie dogs and we have a whole lot of people who do so and i'm sure all pet parents you know it means a lot to all of them for what, for what you've shared today so big big thank, thank you. you thank you guys that so is much for your pet fair india yeah. and of course purina pro plan so thank you pet parents who joined us and the ones who participated in the session got the questions answered as well hope we are were able to answer you know in some way of course you can always reach out to pet fair india to uh, purina pro plan india of course to adnan as well if you have you know your personal questions you can do that and of course the ones who missed it don't worry these live sessions are going to be a regular affair and we will be covering different topics each time meanwhile you can watch this entire video on purina's facebook page purina pro plan india so make sure that you all stay home and stay safe have a great friday and a weekend and we'll catch you on the next one thank you thank you guys